everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Vicious RV with something a little bit fun, a little bit different for you today. This is the Riverside Retro 135, and if you're looking at it, you might be like me and going, where's the door? <laughs> well, it's off the back of this one because this is a rare example of what I call a towable truck camper. It's very similar to a wolf pup you may have actually seen previously on this channel, but I believe this actually predates that wolf pup. And if I'm being fair, I actually think I like this one's bathroom better. And I think it's very cool that instead of a, uh, a conventional dinette that everyone else does, they did things a little bit differently, not just from the standpoint of the cosmetics, which have that cool little retro diner side uh, kind of flair, you know, but also the fact that it gives us a door side bench instead of a door side dinette, which is something I thought would actually be really cool in that wolf pup that they named here um, it's this is certainly again not for everybody but what I like about this is as compared to a truck camper which you need a truck with a pretty decent payload capacity to handle the weight in the bed of the truck by putting it down on the ground and rolling down the road you have expanded the number of potential vehicles that can handle this camper by by just 10 magnitudes basically um, because this thing only it weighs less than 2600 pounds dry it weighs just over 3700 pounds loaded with cargo there are so many vehicles that could handle this thing. They just couldn't handle a truck camper and it opened, like not everybody needs a big monster camper. Some of us just want a little thing to get away and, and to, to just have a little fun, you know? That's where this guy comes in. Let me know what you think about this guy as we go through. Now, as you saw from our little floor plan in the flash footage, you can get these things in like a, a classic kind of retro diner, ruby red sort of color palette that we're looking at here. Uh, or some kind of blue that I, I, I never, I'm not good with names of colors, so that's probably going to come up several times in this video. But, uh, you know, you have, you have a little bit of a choice, which I think is kind of cool, especially in a market with manufacturers who really kind of shoehorn and pigeonhole you and other fun little phrases into one specific decor color palette. But look at this, like, classic checkerboard flooring here. And pardon my shoes, I'm actually laying on the bed, but it's raining outside, and I didn't want to uh, put my wet, gross shoes all over someone's bedspread potentially so I'm just kind of hanging my feet off the bed here but I actually thought from the bed looking back is one of the the better ways to start kind of getting our bearings in this floor plan now something I was wondering is how tall is it in here because if I ET phone home neck stretch here that little point on the top of a hat that's that's about six three uh, so you know this is a, a slightly shorter interior height camper that also means though that it's got a lower exterior clearance so if you're like trying to get it inside a garage door this might be a camper that works better for you sometimes something's worst quality is also its greatest quality something i noticed though this is a non-centralized air unit and pardon the hat here but what that means is that as we walk through here it's going to be a bit of a head bump especially with the knobby jobs that hang down here technical term by the way but the thing is like as a taller person i just you just kind of naturally do the little maneuver like that all the time maybe that works for you maybe it doesn't i suspect this might be a camper where people spend more see i'm doing it right now i don't even realize it um uh people might spend more time outside than inside so maybe that'll work for you or again maybe you're trying to fit uh a, a camper that's like not a pop-up or not a hybrid inside a garage the shorter ceiling height on this might actually be one of its greatest qualities then again you might look at it and go uh no, that's absolutely not its greatest quality. I don't like that. And that's perfectly fine, too. That's why I point this stuff out, so you can be better educated and make your own decisions. Now, it's a small camper. It just doesn't have a big kitchen. Um, you see the little household and USB outlets over there. Those are going to be really clutch when we get spun back around to look at the uh, the bed space. That little bit of countertop we do have, though, is a sealed edge press membrane. Um, and down here, uh, you know, you don't have spot for, like, a big wastebasket in this RV, but... At least you do have a couple dedicated drawers, which is something I can't say for some of the other people who build little campers like this. So to me, that is like not even just one drawer, but two. That is something that they really nailed in here. Now, you may have noticed this is a sofa instead of a dinette model. So if you choose to put a TV on that little wall panel over there where those hookups are, uh, the sofa or bench or whatever you want to call it is really at about one of the best viewing positions possible for it. That being said... I really don't predict a lot of people to really utilize uh, the TV function in this one to a, a real frequent degree. Does, is, does that seem right it, anyway? And once again, flipping around to the door side of the RV. Well, no, not the door side. The camp side of the RV, because the door side is the back. Usually you can use those words interchangeably, but that's not the case here. One of the things I really liked about this is the fact that it has a sofa over here 
instead of just a conventional dinette. Now, it is cool, by the way, that it is still a jackknife sofa. I, I kind of referred to it as a bench earlier. It is a folding sofa, not just a fixed bench. So if you do need to fold that down for small kid or big dog space, you have that opportunity. So we haven't lost the sleeping function. And in fact, I think there's actually more storage below this than you would get from two separate benches. Now, uh, the thing here, in comparison to a traditional dinette, this RV lacks... A table inside it doesn't have any sort of place that you can sit down and eat it really depends on you either bringing a portable table which this RV has a huge outside pass-through that we're gonna see there's plenty of space for that but uh, it, you know it, you, you're gonna be probably eating either in a table that you bring with you or at the park picnic table and if you're gonna do that please bring something to uh, cover the park table because both people and animals do and leave gross things on the public table. So always bring your own little covering, even if it's disposable. I wanted just to show you the location of the furnace right there, because if I don't, someone's going to assume it doesn't have it. And by the way, that is a six cubic foot gas electric two-way absorption fridge. I don't believe they have any other refrigerator swaptions available on this one. Our cabinetry, by the way, I was pleasantly surprised to, to find that that is pocket screwed. Although I did notice a little bit of little something's missing right there, something that we're going to have to address. We have three of these on this lot currently. This is the only one that I noticed that on, but if I see something, I say something, even if it's not obvious on camera. Something else is not obvious, like I could do this and I could move on and you would assume that there was a fan in there, but I pride myself on being as transparent and informative as possible. And that's one of the things that really shocked me on this camper. There's no fan at all in that vent, which feels to me like a, a little bit of a miss. Overall, though, I like the way that they've laid out this bathroom. Um, it's it's a little bit tight sometimes, like you see with you know with me sitting around the toilet right here. But I think anyone who's looking at a small RV understands that there's just certain things that have to go along. You know, when we got a 13 foot box and the fact that they managed to give us a separate toilet and shower in one room instead of splitting it up, I, I think wasn't too bad. Pardon my umbrella in there. You may have noticed that's a shower pan, not a tub. Uh, something else that's less obvious again, though, and, uh, and again, being fully transparent, that's not shower surround paneling. That is white wallboard paneling. So when you are done in here, you have to make absolutely sure you wipe down the uh, walls with your towel and do so uh, pretty, pretty rigorously, considering the fact that that is not a ventilating fan. Um, also of note, remember uh, I was doing a little ceiling height test in the living room. Well, if we repeat that test here in the shower, because you do need to step up, my head is all the way up inside that thing. And I don't love that fact, but I'm also not going to hide it just because it's, you know, less convenient. Now, pardon my muddy footprints in here. I'll get those cleaned out when I'm all done. But I kind of wanted to give you just like, you know, a walk up from the front sense of size in here. You've sort of seen this view and this angle from our floor plan in a flash, but I wanted to give you a little bit better view. Now, uh, you see you've got a Bluetooth AM FM stereo there. No DVD function or anything like that, although it does have an HDMI expansion plug. It also does have inside and outside speakers. Now, hang with me on this one. Because by default, this is a camp queen. And by default, a lot of people just went, nope, corner camp queen doesn't work for me. Thing is, I could see this RV working for more than just a couple. I could see this being a solo camper. I could actually see it being a single parent camper where you could, you know, fold this down and take your kid out on the weekends. There's a lot of non-traditional families that people don't really consider when they're looking at RVs. But the thing is, if you want a taller, longer bed, you could put a 60 by 80 true queen into this one. You might be wondering, well, how do you do that? And the answer is if you are willing to remove these headboard pockets up here. These are just pure storage. And don't get me wrong, this RV is painfully limited on its storage capacity because it is so small. But there's no wiring run inside that. Because remember I said we'd come back to talk about these plugs over here? This is what I was talking about. If you wanted to remove that, it wouldn't be hard to do. We could do that for you. It's not really, it's not like that's going to affect your warranty or anything. You're not really modifying anything. You're just popping that out real quick. And then if you wanted to, you could pop in a 60 by 80 queen bed of your choice. So if you're looking for a simple camper, but you still want to sleep good at night instead of on the back break or wait for a death that comes from most camper uh, builders, well, you have that option if you are so inclined. Now, in terms of the road mode function on this one, it's fantastic. Now, not only due to the fact that it obviously has no slides, but consider that with that rear door over there, um, 
if where you park, if somebody else parked over the line a little bit and you wouldn't really even be able to get your door open, because the door comes off the back of this camper, you can always hop out of your vehicle, walk around the camper, and hop in the back, and it's fully functional, actually. One of the cool things about this camper, if you roll onto your campsite late at night, I wouldn't even worry about unhitching. I'd back into my campsite, I'd hop in the door, I'd leave it hitched up so that it's stable, basically, and uh, I, I'd just jump in the bed and I'd call it a night until the morning, and then I'd worry about putting my jacks down and making a bunch of noise so you don't disturb your neighbors, you know, make a bad first impression. Speaking of jacks, this little thing is so small and so light, if it's not hitched to your vehicle and you're gonna get in it, make sure you have the back jacks down. I stepped in this thing just now before the jacks were down and it went, huh. Eh. And I think it, if I really stood on the back of that and if I bounced a little bit, I think I could actually get this sucker to pop a wheelie. So little proactive pro tip there for you from your old Uncle Josh. And you know, an another little benefit of a rear door floor plan like this that I haven't really discussed uh, is the fact that um, since, you know, the door just loads straight in, there's nothing stopping you from just like loading some uncommon long cargo that doesn't often fit into a lot of other RVs. Like there's a lot of people say, you know, I, I wish I had something where I could haul like my bikes or something like that, but I don't want to get a toy hauler. That's a neat little opportunity that this one offers you. And again, you do have your choice between a couple of... Uh, <laughs> Whatever, we're rolling. You have your choice between a couple different uh, color packages on these. Um, I don't know how well the camera is picking this up, but it's like more of a like a, a ruby red, and I don't know if you want to call it robin eggs blue or what color that is, but uh, on, on my camera screen here, it, it looks like it's more of like a dark blue, but it's actually a, a pretty light bright blue color. Cerulean? Is that what that's called? Somebody help me out, ladies. Ladies, you're good with colors. What color is this? But you may also notice it looks like there's a silver base exterior here and a white. And I have to apologize. I didn't catch that when I first walked out here, so I didn't pre-investigate that. I will have to post-investigate that and see if I can get some answers that I can write on the screen for you in the meantime. Uh, personally, I think I prefer the white base versus the silver base, but it doesn't look bad by any stretch. But back to the topic at hand here, the size of this thing, it's only like 15 feet nine inches i think from the tip of that tongue to the back of the wall of this thing so it is a short easy towing floor plan only again about a 13 foot box about 16 foot tip to tail 2600 pounds dry 3700 pounds fully maxed out you don't need a big monster vehicle to handle this i like the fact that we still have that heat venting stovetop hood right there and a hot cold black tank flush instead of just a cold water sprayer which wouldn't have surprised me but i like the important things that they have in here plus i do think that this one has a pretty good bathroom um that does have a full black tank flush as well but look at the bottom right corner right there it's really weird to me it actually has separate black and gray outlets that like the front one is a uh, the gray tank outlet just for the kitchen. The back one appears to be the bathroom black and gray. It's just really weird to me that they didn't just hook those two things together, but at least they're right next to one another, so it's not like you have to go, you know, trekking all over your campsite to try to, to, to figure that out. Also something that I noticed, four corner stabilizer jacks. That is the kind of thing that little trailers like this will very often not include. And if you're looking at this one, it might look a little bit smaller. I don't know how well that translates to camera, but this one is slightly narrow of body, which is another reason that the weight is down a little bit. And I actually think the fact that, I think it's about a 90 inch body, which is like seven and a half feet. That is what's giving it the ability to have that little bit better bathroom space as compared to some of the other things that I've seen out here. Now up front, you see that storage compartment door giving you a little quick peek flyby footage inside of there, right there. And, uh, ooh, that's interesting. So this is not made to be some like heavy duty, off road, hefty, hefty, hefty kind of camper or anything like that. But if you get over here, you notice it actually has height adjustable shackles on that suspension. I'm almost a little bit shocked that these don't ship from the factory in the taller position. So if you actually do want to lift this up off the ground a little bit, uh, about say another inch, inch and a half, that's something you could very easily do from the factory without actually modifying anything and messing with any sort of factory warranty sort of stuff there. Um, 
the uh, awning outside here. Uh, that is a power awning, which is cool. It's obviously very, very small because there's just not a whole lot of sidewall to utilize. If my memory serves me correctly, I think there actually is like one of those uh, bat wing awnings that you could option off of the back of this thing. I think given the small size of this camper, that is something I would personally prefer, but what's your take on that? So like I said, something a little different, hopefully a little bit fun today. These are, if nothing else, they're cool just to kind of look at, you know. Maybe they're not practical for you, but I think there's a lot of people, uh, you know, just maybe a solo individual person uh, who, like, I don't care if I have a corner bed. I'm not rolling over anybody else. I could see this maybe working for you. This is a fun little outdoorsy kind of thing. You know what else I thought about? If someone has, like, a big fifth wheel they leave parked somewhere, sometimes it is actually kind of nice to have something small, basic, inexpensive for just a little weekend traveling trip. And, hey, again, you have your choice of colors, although I don't think you can mixy-matchy the interior and the exterior. So let me know what you think about these little guys. And if uh, you appreciate the way that we point out the good, the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and catch us on the next one. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.